In today's video, we're going to cover explosives. Now, there's a couple different kinds of explosives included in Max, so we'll just cover all of those. Uh, here we have the landmine. So as you can see, as you walk up close to it, it gives you a prompt. It says press E to pick up mines, so press E. And then that changes the prompt to press R to place the mine. So I'm just going to walk over to where I want to place it. And just set that down, press R. You can hear that little click and that means that the mine is, is armed and ready to explode. So we're just going to press this button here. That's going to open our door. Our volunteer is going to step out and demonstrate the explosive effect of the mine. So as it gets close enough to the mine, there he goes. So that's the, the mine is you know pretty straightforward. The, uh, the next one is proximity mine. This one's a little bit different in the sense that I don't have to place it um, ahead of time. I can uh, set it up in the scene and it's already armed. Um, it's got a trigger range so as uh, the enemy or the player gets too close it'll start to beep. Um, the player gets the option to pick it up and disarm it. The enemy does not. So let's, uh, let's demonstrate that. Our volunteer will walk up, listen close. There we go. So once he uh, gets close enough, the beeping starts. Uh, once the beeping stops, so does he. So um, the next one is called Dynamite, uh, but I couldn't find a model that I liked. Uh, there's not one in Max uh, that's included automatically, at least not one that I could find. Um, and I couldn't find a model online that I like, so I chose C4 instead. Same difference. Um, you know, if I come up to the, the C4, incidentally, I will leave a link to this model in the description below in case you want to use it. It is free. Um, and I'll also give credit to the artist uh, that made it. But if we press E to collect it, and it says press P to place the C4. Now, this one has three different modes. It has uh, manual, it has timed, and it has uh, remote. In this instance, I'm using remote, but we'll cover the other three modes and, and how to set those up as well. I'm just going to put this over here where I want the C4. Now, I'm, I've walked away from it. It's primed. It's safe right now. It's not going to be um, a problem for me until I walk away. When I walk out of the uh, setup range, then I get my prompt. So now I'm outside of the prompt, or, uh, outside of the range rather, and I get my prompt that says press X to detonate the C4. So now I have control of the C4. I'm just going to press. Now if I also, if I walk within that range, it goes away. So just kind of bear that in mind. I, I want to stay away from the, the C4. Um, but if I press the button, our volunteer will walk out. And now I just need to make sure that I see that he's close enough to get uh, within range of the bomb. And then I can press the X and ruin his day. So that's how the uh, dynamite effect works. Uh, like I said, there's two other modes. And I'll cover those here uh, in a second. Uh, but I think you get the idea. Now, there's other kinds of explosives available. Um, pretty much anything can be set to explosive. Anything that's a dynamic object. You can check a box in the settings for that object, make it explosive. And it's going to work very much the same way as these barrels. But these barrels are already set up. Uh, so take a look at this. If I pick up our weapon here and I fire at this barrel, watch what happens. All right. So they're all uh, reacting to each other. It's really just the explosion happens that causes damage. Uh, once the the object uh, loses all of its kind of hit points, uh, then it explodes as well. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So it can be uh, reactive. Um, there's also grenades. I don't know if you've ever played with these, but these are a lot of fun. You just throw them and they'll explode as well. Cool. And those are also going to you know damage the barrels, damage the enemy, whatever. Uh, there's one other kind that I came up with. This isn't really stock. This is something that I just th thought, hmm, I wonder if I can pull this off. So we have a mortar, um, and I'll show you how I set all of this up. But basically, walk up to the mortar, press E, watch what happens. Boom. All right, so I'll show you how I did that as well. 
That one's a little bit different since it's not actually going to hurt anything. <laughs> it's just for, for effect. Uh, so let's take a look and see how these are all done. So we'll return back to our landmine first. Click on that. It's called anti-personnel landmine. This comes with max. You can use your own model if you want to. Uh, we have a pickup range. That's just how close we need to be in order to be able to pick up the model, uh, the, the mine rather. Uh, we have the trigger distance. I mentioned that before. That's how close you have to be to trigger the, the mine. Um, the enemy here distance. If it, uh, here's, here's what I have determined about this. Um, originally the distance was larger, like the default number was larger. And when I was setting down the mine, it was just blowing up because it's, it could kind of hear or sense that the enemy was on the other side of the wall. So I had to dial that in to make sure it didn't happen. Um, so I think that's what that d does is it's just, um, it's a little bit different than trigger distance in the sense that it's set to, to hear enemies moving around. Uh, we have the prompt text. Uh, you can change this to whatever you want to. It just defaults to press E to pick up the mine, press R to place the mine. And then also mine is primed and armed. Um, the arming delay, that's the amount of seconds uh, from the time that I set it down to the time you hear that click. That was three seconds. You can dialed in, make it uh, what you want it to be. Now, harm player, I think, is a little bit deceptive because... If I walk up to the mine after it's placed, it's not going to blow up. But if I'm within range when it does blow up, I'm going to get hurt. So it's a little bit deceptive there, but just, you know, be aware. It's not going to blow up just because you walked over it, but it would hurt you if you were within range of the explosion. Explosion is still going to hurt you. So just be aware of that. Uh, next, we have the proximity mine. As I mentioned, you want to set this in the scene ahead of time. Um, and, uh, you really only get the two options. You get the range, which is how close the enemy or in, you know, uh, the player has to be in order to, uh, get it to, to set off. Um, and then that'll start basically the, the beeping sound. You have that amount of time as a player to press E to pick it up and disarm it. Um, that amount of time is set here, the detonation time. So that's that beeping sound. Now, it's kind of hard to see because that box is really small, but it says 1500, right? That's milliseconds. So anytime you see a number like that, uh, like before on the mine, we saw uh, just single digit numbers. Those are sec whole seconds. If you see a, like a big number like this, those are milliseconds, right? So that's basically one and a half seconds. I think the default was two and a half seconds, which I just, I wanted it to be a little faster. So, um, so I just changed that to, to accommodate. The other thing I changed, I should point this out, is in both cases, with both mines, uh, the explosion effect wasn't enough to kill the zombie um, as it was, uh, you know, out of the box. The zombie's health was 150 originally, so it would hurt it, but it wouldn't actually kill it. So I lowered the health of the enemy to 75 to ensure that it would die when it got uh, blown up. So bear that in mind as well, kind of dial that in for, for what you're trying to go for. Um, and then here's the, the dynamite or the C4. Um, this one, like I said, has a few more settings. So I saved this one, uh, towards the, the end here. <clears throat> um, the placement time and the explosion delay don't really mean anything for what I demonstrated, which was the, uh, the remote behavior because um well i'll explain here in a moment remote is remote you have control of it and so it's not going to explode or anything until you're ready for it to explode the player safe distance that's the amount of uh, space i needed to back up in order to get my prompt right um so it's looking for that the enemy here distance pretty much the same as the mine um although it really only applies if uh, for the other uh, modes which we'll cover here in a second uh the pickup range again same same thing as any other you know how, how close you know, do you have to be in order to get your prompt to, to collect now if i change it to manual that's when placement time is going to matter right because if i set it to manual in fact let me let me demonstrate this now it's on manual the placement time is four seconds so bear that in mind so i'm just going to walk over to the c4 grab that off the table 
I'm going to place the C4, but I'm not going to, I don't have it set to a prompt. So I need to get, you know, out of dodge quick. So I'm going to press P and walk away. And about four seconds later, boom. It's so it's a little like a timer, except that you have to be without outside of the, the safe distance. And uh, then it just kind of blows up on its own. Um, <clears throat> if I set it to, excuse me, uh, if I set it to timed, timer uh, then the explosion delay is what matters right and i've got them set to the same thing but here here's the the difference i should probably just move the starting position closer but it's okay just walk over to mine pick that up or the uh, c4 other place it now watch after after it primes boom all right, so the that four seconds is a countdown, um, and then it blows up once you're outside of the range. So, different ways to, to set that one off. Uh, the explosion barrels, those don't really have any logic to them. It's really more, like I said before, an explosive tick box that's set up in the model. Um, and I'm pretty sure any dynamic... I guess not any dynamic, it's probably to uh broad but some uh since static holes are never going to be explosive um let's see if i can find a good example of what could be explosive i mean really just look out for that um tick box right if it has the explodable tick box then you know that you can make it into an explosive that's really kind of the take home i guess not every object can be explosive but a lot of them can so really look out for those and then the last thing I wanted to show you how I did this was the, um, the uh, mortar. If I click on the mortar object, you can see that I've changed it to a dynamic object. Uh, see, this one has that explodable tick box. So I guess that technically could like blow up, like be defective and blow up on you. Um, the behavior I used was a switch. So it's just, a, I mean, so different than a light switch, right? On off, right? Uh, so... Um, I just changed the the text prompt. Now the the press E, to, you know, is uh, built in, so you just want to say you know to fire or to turn on or whatever you know whatever you're going for. I got rid of the off text because I didn't want that showing up after I uh, turned it on. We have a, a particle, and it's just the out of the box explosion particle effect. Um, and I set that up, you know, on. Uh, on the, on the switch rather. So there's a logic connection pointing to the, the, um, the, uh, the particle effect. So I press E that you see that kind of initial explosion. And there's also this, uh, logic connector stretched way out here to the ruined building. And it is connected to the, um, the trigger zone. So the trigger zone, let me turn this off real quick. I just uh, added the timed event uh, behavior to it. Um, and, um, it, you know, the event count is just how many events are you triggering. Uh, the event delay is how long. So I wanted there to be a delay between the time that I uh, triggered the mortar to the time the, the explosion happens. It kind of simulated the, the travel time for the mortar around. Um, and then, uh, you know, visibility is really just, is, is it going to be visible? Not, I don't know why you'd, uh, well, I mean, there's, I guess under the, you know, under different circumstances, you'd set it to, to be invisible, but it just depends on what you're doing. It's pretty versatile is the point. And then I put the explosion sound on the, uh, timed event trigger because I wanted that secondary explosion sound to show up and you can't really put one on a proximity mine. Uh, I'm sorry, on a um, particle effect is what I mean. Um, and the only other thing uh, that I did, uh, I played around with the scale multiplier. Ultimately, I left it alone, but you can scale it up, like make it a bigger explosion just by uh, multiplying the, the scale of the proximity or the particle effect. I don't know why I keep saying that. 
So, so that's it. That's explosives. I'm sure there's a number of different other ways these can be used, but this is just a brief example, a brief demonstration of, uh, of the proximity, or I'm sorry, of the explosions and what you can do with them. Play around with them. I'd love to see what else you, uh, you guys come up with. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. Um, if there's anything you're, you know, trying to, to work out and can't figure it out, feel free to reach out to me. You can leave a comment below. You can, uh, reach out to me on discord. Uh, there's a community discord for game guru max. So if you're not already joined, I highly encourage you to do so. Cause there's a lot of really great people in there that are smarter than me. That'll, that'll help you out as well. Um, if you like the video, please be sure to click the like button. That really helps out a lot. Um, it gets the word out. I'm trying to grow the channel. The more the channel grows, the more people will be helped by the videos that you're being helped by. So you can help me out. You can help them out by engaging with the video. Click like, um, if you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe. Um, that also helps uh, with, you know, growing the channel. Um, and there's also the bell icon if you want to be notified when I uh, post these videos, because it's not going to be uh, a set frequency. It's really just going to be when I can. Um, some sets like this are a little more elaborate than others and take just more time to, to do. Uh, but I try to, you know, do quality content. So um, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching all the way through. I hope I didn't talk your ear off too much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.